So you start out, and no matter what soul type you are, if you're outcasted, or you feel different, or separated, or insecure, or shy from other people that you're going to school with, or people that you grow up with, you're going to automatically get a complex issue. So that means, you know, it's not that there's something wrong with you, it's just that you might not really feel comfortable with other people. So it starts out as a slight social anxiety, a social fear, especially if you've gone for people that had an ignorant way of doing things even at a very young age and then you try to fit in and the people reject you that makes it even worse because in the earlier years of growing up and developing you know those are the years that really count as far as basing your whole opinions and ideals of the way that people interact with you so in grade school when you're making friends being so vulnerable at that state um, a little bit of rejection, it's going to stick with you forever. And if you are an empathic, or if you're somebody that's um, an incarnated angel, or an angelic human, or a star seed, it's going to hit you even harder. So you strive for approval. So there might be some dysfunction going on at home, um, you know, maybe problems with parents, maybe the father's not there and the mother is busy with her own life or maybe you know the mother is intoxicated you might have some abuse issues in whichever way or form so that's also going to make it even more difficult so it could just be anything small it could just start out as a problem in self-esteem or or um, social communication or it could go as deep as being abuse problems and um, even something much deeper than that. So you also have to look at karma too because if you've had past lives where you partook in, you know, um, trying out herbals and different types of substances, you're definitely going to bring that interest back with you in your consciousness. So you have all of these different things that could be a contributing factor to addiction. Also, the human brain, the way that it works is that if you're not getting a certain amount of a chemical in a certain department of your brain, you're going to end up feeling really, really down. So if you don't have enough serotonin, you're going to end up feeling depressed. If you don't have enough dopamine, you're going to feel like very tired, very unhappy. Nothing is really going to excite you. So adding that to all of those other issues with the social anxiety, the problems at home, and the complex issues, you know, you're really just kind of dooming yourself for addiction. So there's a lot of kids also that don't have any of those issues, and they grow up where their parents just want to keep them quiet, so they give them their way all the time. And what that's doing is creating an impulsive personality, somebody that always has to have their way when they want it. And that also leads to addictive behaviors as well. So as you're going up, and whichever case it may be for you, you have that sticking with you. But I've always known that self-esteem and social anxiety to be the main cause of addictive behavior. So you get to be in your teens. You're sick and tired of not having a place to belong. You feel like there's really no other option if you can't beat them you join them. It's not really what you want to do because you know in your heart that it's wrong, but you partake in it anyway. And then once you try it, that pleasure center in the brain is immediately triggered. You find that you're more outgoing and you're more outspoken and you really don't really care how people react to you. So you just be yourself, whereas you couldn't be before because you were so afraid with that insecurity. And then you see that people really, it doesn't really matter what they think, that they're pretty much in the same boat that you're in, and then you all become friends. And thus it, it groups together a bunch of people with similar feelings of being outcasted and not fitting in and insecure. And then it becomes like a group social thing. So everybody sits around, it starts out usually with drinking, you know, you start out drinking, and then it starts out with smoking weed, and then that stuff kind of gets boring, you want something more exciting, and all of your friends are keeping up with the times, and you're listening to music, and in the music they're talking about heroin use, they're talking about sex, they're talking about money, and that's also 
giving you dopamine in the brain because it's talking about things that you know other people are getting pleasure from. So then you start to mimic and copy because you're not happy with yourself. You want so bad to be anything else but you. So you copy the rappers or you copy your friends or other musicians or whatever it may be in your particular case. And then you become trapped because once you start getting into those harder things, it starts to really center into your brain in the neurotransmitters and your body will need the drugs from that point on in order to continue to deliver pleasure. If you don't have it, you can end up very violently ill, you can end up very extremely depressed, suicidal, you might not want to do anything. So there are some drugs out there that actually cause physical symptoms that if you don't have them. So like heroin would be a really good example of this. You know, with heroin, it becomes a part of the blood system. You're taking it in all the time, whether you're doing it through the nasal or you're doing it through the veins, and it becomes a part of the bloodstream. It becomes a part of the chemicals in the brain that without it, you're pretty much a zombie. You can't get up and move. You have no motivation. Your whole mind is just focused on trying to figure out how you're going to get that pleasuring feeling and not feel like total crap for the whole entire day. And then it becomes an obsession. And that obsession leads to making a lot of horrible mistakes. I've known people that have sold their bodies for the drugs. I know people that have stolen things and just totally acted out of character. So I've always said, you know, they have always called like drugs or medication pharmaceuticals, which in another language in Latin is pharmacia, um, which means a form of sorcery. So what they mean by that is that anything that alters your consciousness is like light work because you're adding something to it to change it. And when you're doing drugs and you're taking a medication, that's exactly what you're doing. You're changing that entire consciousness. So anything that can really alter your consciousness becomes a spiritual problem. And you are no longer you. You start acting out of character. You're snappy. You're irritable. You're tired. You hate everybody. You hate yourself. You don't really care anymore. And then it comes to the point where you've been in it for too long. And it just feels like there's no going back. And, you know, I never really saw anything wrong with maybe smoking a little weed or ayahuasca or spiritual things like that. Like something that you would do once in a very, very, very great while or like, you know, once in a blue moon for that spiritual experience. Shamans have done it for eons. But the harder drugs are man-made substances. Like people will say, well, no, heroin and cocaine are derived from plants. And they are, but there's also man-made chemicals that are always added to it. Nothing is pure. They add it to it so that it seems like it's more quality, so that they can actually keep, you know, the real stuff, you know, to keep cutting it up and making more money off of other people. So you're really just getting more cut than you're getting the actual drug. And you're harming your body. And it's not for a spiritual reason. It's to fill this void that you have within yourself. So there's nothing wrong with like having a drink or like, you know, experimenting with some of the spiritual recreational um, substances as long as you have it under control and it's for that reason. But when you start doing drugs where it's harming yourself and you're taking yourself away from yourself and hurting the people that you love, that's when you really have to stop and think like, is this really worth it? So there's so many people out there that continue doing drugs even though... It's totally destroyed everything that they have. Like, you know, they've lost their family and friends. The ties have been cut and bridges have been burned. And then you have people that, like, they have not a dollar in their pocket. They don't even have a home anymore. They're walking around in the same grungy clothing. And they're sleeping in the streets. And it becomes, like, you know, like a zombie. You, you're you waking up. You're walking to that same old spot to go get the same old thing, even if it's just a little bit, um, just to get off at E, and you're really trying to get yourself to where you can at least function for the day, and then once you do function for the day, you have to worry about the next day. So it's like just insanity, and that's not any way for anybody to live. So 
a lot of people try to go to rehabilitational centers, they do counseling, they do groups, they get on methadone, they use suboxins. There are people that just try to quit cold turkey or they move to another state entirely to just get away. And none of those things really work. Now, I do know that like methadone and suboxone are a good aid to help people get off of certain drugs, but at the same time, you're really just putting yourself right back into another drug, and that's hard to get off of too. So you're going to need help is basically what you're going to need to do. Um, you know, maybe using, if you are using a, a really hard substance such as heroin, morphine, or crystal meth, or anything like that, you're going to need some kind of medication that will help you to not feel icky and all crazy when you're trying to get off of it. But you don't want to become dependent on that. And then what you want to do is take a good look inward and just take time away from your friends um, or the people that are so-called friends because friends really would never allow you to destroy yourself. That's not love. They're allowing you to destroy yourself because they're destroying themselves. Misery loves company. So you have to have time alone. It's never going to work if you don't have that time to go inward. Why did you do this to yourself? What is it that you don't love about yourself? Can it be fixed? What can you do to fix it? Nothing in this world is unfixable. You can fix everything. Those, bur those bridges that have been burned, they can always be rebuilt. But it takes time and a lot of people want it to happen instantly. So they just don't bother or they give up very quickly. So you need to get away, you need to have time to think, you need to do an, an inventory on yourself, like what what is it that drove me to do this? Was it the insecurity issues? Was it the problems at home? And then you have to learn how to forgive, you really do. You have to learn how to forgive yourself because if you can't forgive yourself, then nobody else can forgive you because you're going to carry that, that guilt around and that guilt will always be the motivation to just turn around and start up again. So you want to allow yourself to let go. And then start rebuilding healthy relationships because support is really good. And you can't allow yourself to, to feel like you're being controlled or bottled down by people. You have to really understand that maybe these people have a better perspective than, they, that, than you do. And allow them to maybe run your life a little bit at first until you can do it on your own. So after you've done all that and you're clean for a little bit of time. You want to avoid people, places, and things. I know a lot of you that have done a lot of groups have probably heard this a million times before, but it's true. I mean, there's music that can trigger you to use, old songs that you used to get high to, or even songs from that period, that year, or that month that you heard during that time period of when you were getting high, or um, re people from the past, or um, even relationships, because if you were in a relationship with somebody that you were getting high with, that person's always going to remind you of getting high, no matter how many years away it's been since you last used. So you want to start fresh, and you want to start putting some positive people in your life. And you can't think of, well, this person's a geek because they're clean, or because they have a better head on their shoulders. You have to really understand that this person that is clean and doing well understands that they're worth something, and you have to know that you're worth something too. So use medication as a little bit of an aid, and then start making these better connections and leave the past to the past. You can never fix the past. The past is done. You can't fix what's happened to you. You can't fix what you've done to others, but you can make it right now. And the best way to do that is to understand who you really are. And every single soul out there is special, but you have to understand your soul. Like, why were you so shy? Are you a special soul type? Or are you somebody that has a reception of energy where you're picking up on other people's thoughts and judgments? You know, and then you learn to work with those things.